Uh, so yeah, Lena Lee is joining us from Waterloo uh, and we'll be speaking today about tilings and vertex ordered graphs. Go ahead when you're ready, thanks. Okay, thanks for the invitation and thanks everyone for being here. Uh, actually, I've been in the University of South Carolina two or three years ago for a nice conference. So hopefully in the future, we'll have a chance to visit the campus in person again. Um, so today I will talk about the tiling problems for vertex order graphs. This is a joint work with my PhD advisor, Professor Zofalok from University of Illinois, and also Andrew Triglo from the University of Birmingham in the UK. Okay, so let's start with the basic thing. What is a tiling problem? Giving two graphs, uh, H and G, so in general, it could be graphs, directed graphs, ordered graphs, and even hypergraphs. And edge tiling of G is just a collection of vertex disjoint copies of edge in G. And we say uh, edge tiling is perfect if it covers all the vertices of G. And so the essential problem in the graph tiling is we want to study the sufficient conditions for having a perfect tiling. And a cornerstone result in this area is the Harnell Semmerdi theorem from 1970. And they proved for a graph G with a minimal degree, at least, ah, sorry, my email notification. So with a minimal degree, at least one minus one over R times N. And here, this condition, this divisibility condition is just the sufficient, a necessary condition for having a perfect tidy. Okay, so once you have this minimum degree, then G will contains a perfect KR tiling. So KR is just a complete graph with R vertices. And moreover, this condition is indeed the best possible because there exists some graph with the slightly less minimal degree that has no perfect KR tiling. So this condition is the best possible. And I would like to spend one minute in here to explain this construction because it was so nice. So the construction is actually pretty easy. Uh, we just partition the vertex set into two sets. One set have size and over R plus one. And this set A will be an independent set and this B will be a complete graph. And in addition, we're gonna add all the edges in between. So that is a construction. And you can easily check the minimal degree is exactly this one. Okay, so why it does not have a perfect KR tiling? So let's assume it does have a perfect KR tiling. So this is my perfect KR tiling. And in particular, if you think about a single copy H, then its intersection with the set A must be at most one. Because if you have two vertices on A, then you have a missing edge, but we want a complete graph. So in sum, if it's a perfect tiling, then its intersection with A is at most n over R times one. Because what n over R is the number of copies I could have in the perfect tiling. And this number is strictly smaller than the size of A. So now we have a contradiction because we claim it's a perfect tiling, but actually it doesn't cover all the vertices of A. Okay, so that's the harnell semmerdi theorem. And for the ease of notation, we define this minimal degree threshold, uh, which is the minimum integers such that for every graph with minimal degree at least K, then it contains perfect edge tiling. So roughly speaking, the minimal degree threshold describe the worst condition I could have to force a perfect tiling. And the study of the minimal degree threshold for unordered graph has been done by Kuhn and Alsis. So that's this one. And one of the key parameter here is the so-called critical chromatin number. So here F is still an unordered graph just the normal simple graph. And the critical chromatin number is defined by this formula. 
So here, this chi is just the classical chromatic number. And the sigma, sigma here is the size of the smallest color class over all the possible proper colorings. Proper colorings with exactly chi colors. And it's clear this number is not necessarily an integer because of this fraction, but it's always between the uh, chromatic number and the chromatic number minus one. So it's pretty close to the chromatic number. And what Quinn also has proved is for any unordered graph F, its minimal degree threshold is either determined by this uh, chromatic number for some graphs, or it's determined by this critical chromatic number. And both results are up to some constant. So indeed, in their paper, they gave the full description on the what are the graphs in here, but it's a bit technical, so I just ignore the detail here. So anyway, up to here, we have a very satisfied results for the unordered graph. So it is natural to think about this problem on some other objects. Um, there are some studies on directed graphs and hypergraphs. There are many literatures, but again, because of short of time, so I will not mention it. Okay, now it's time to move to our main topic. We talk about ordered graph. What is an ordered graph? An ordered graph on n vertices is just a graph whose vertices has been labeled with this n integers. So naturally, those vertices have a linear ordering. And for two ordered graphs, we say one ordered graph H is containing G. If we could find a mapping from H and G, such that first, those two vertices are adjacent if and only if their pre-images are adjacent. And second, I want after the mapping, those vertices still keep the same linear ordering. So phi of i is less than phi of j if and only i is less than g. Okay. Um, and similarly as before, we can define this minimal degree threshold for ordered graph. So let me just repeat the definition here. Uh, that is the minimum integers k <laughs> such that for every graph, for every ordered graph, with minimal degree at least k, then it has a perfect ordered edge tiling. So in the ordered edge tiling, just to be careful, once you find the embedding, we want the vertices to keep the same ordering. So that's the difference. Okay. Uh, when we speak of ordered graphs, there's an important graph parameter called the interval chromatic number. So the, this interval chromatic number in the order graph is the minimum number of intervals of the vertex set that edge can be partitioned in two, such that there's no edge in each interval. So in other words, we want to partition into the independent intervals. So this is kind of variant of the classical chromatic number for order graph. So the cr classical chromatic number is we just partition the vertex set into independent sets. But here, not only we want the par parts to be independent set, but also we want keep them to be interval. That's the difference. Uh, to, to describe the minimal degree threshold for order graphs, we also introduce a new parameter, this alpha star. Uh, the definition is a bit technical. That's going to there slowly. Uh, first, I will define those alpha parameter iteratively. The way is, by default, we're going to define alpha 0 plus to be 0. This is just by default. And then alpha 1, alpha 1 will be the largest integer, such that from 1 to this number, it is an independent set. So basically we want to take a largest interval here, independent interval here. And once you have this alpha one, then you can move on to alpha two, which is the largest independent interval from alpha one plus one up to that integer. And you just define the so on 
And in the end, when you reach to H, that will be exactly this alpha chi plus because that's the definition of the interval command number. I can partition into this many of independent intervals. <clears throat> so that is this set parameter. And similarly, we can define this parameter in the reverse ordering. So we start with the largest one. By default, we said alpha zero is H plus one. And then you're gonna find the largest independent interval and denote the endpoints to be alpha one minus. And then you define alpha two and so on until finally we reach this alpha chi minus. Okay, so we just def define this maximal independent intervals iteratively. And where are my alpha star? Alpha star is just here, you should think about this is the average length of the first L interval and proportional to H. So we just want the proportion. So this is a ratio, which is always between zero and one. And we will take the minimum of this number over both direction. So this is basically the re reverse direction and also over all the L, which is strictly less than chi. <clears throat> so that is our star. The reason, the reason we introduce this parameter is because this actually gives a very nice lower bound for my minimal degree threshold. And that's the next proposition, I would say. Uh, so this result says for any order graph, we could find an ordered graph G with this minimal degree. So slightly less than this one over alpha star times N. And this graph will contains no perfect tiling. And in other words, this number would give a lower bound for my minimal degree threshold. Okay. Uh, the construction is pretty similar to the construction I just mentioned for Harnell's Um So let's just assume this alpha star is actually achieved by some alpha L plus. And for, for the minus, it's pretty sim similar, just symmetric. And we're going to let S equal to this alpha star times n times L, which is equal to this. And now we start to construct the graph in, in the right side. And so usually when I draw this graph, I really means I would order the graph, I will order the vertices in this order, like from bottom to top, that is the increasing order. Okay, so now let's first take the the first S plus one vertices, the smallest S plus one vertices. And we're gonna partition them into L independent intervals. So each, each interval is independent set and we will have L intervals. And also we want, the, we want them to have roughly the equal size. And for the rest of the vertices, we just put into one set B. And the edge set will be, we add all the edges between any of the two parts, any of the two, between any of the two sets. And we don't really care about the edges inside the B, except that we want to satisfy the minimal degree condition. So for simplicity, we just add all the edges in B. So we just add all the edges in here. And so you can easily check this actually touch the minimal degree condition. Uh, so it remains to uh, discuss why it does not have a perfect tiling. And the reason is also similar as a previous one. So the key is we're gonna have this property. That is, if you take a single copy, then its intersection with the first S plus one vertices is at most alpha L. Um, the proof used the definition of this parameter. Uh, it, it's easy, but a bit technical, so I just skip the detail. So anyway, we could easily prove this. And then similar as before, if you have a perfect tiling, then the intersection of this perfect tiling with S plus one will be at most this alpha L times the number of copies of edge, which is n over edge, 
which is strictly less than s plus one. And now we are in the same situation. We claim this is a perfect tiling, but it turns out it cannot cover all the vertices in the in this set. So it's a contradiction. Okay. And this type of extremal construction we often call the space barriers. Um, the reason is you can see here we fail to have a perfect tiling because we run out of the space for uh, doing for covering this set. So, yeah, so this results gave a general lower bound for this minimal degree threshold for any order graphs. Uh, for some order graphs, this is actually the sufficient conditions for having perfect tiling. We will talk about that later. But for some graphs, actually, they are worse extremal constructions. So uh, it's, it's a behavior is quite complicated. And Start from here, we're going to focus on the case when the interval chromatic number is equal to two, because this case is kind of easier. Um, to, before we I state our main result, I need the three more definitions. Um, this property ABC. We said an order graph has property A if it has no edges in the first half of the interval and the second half of the interval. So basically, you only have the edges among those two big half intervals. And it's easy to check once you have this property, my parameter alpha star is strictly greater than one half. That's property A. Um, property B is for any partition of the vertex set into two non-empty intervals. And there's always an edge between them. Okay, that's property B. And property C, here this as such is basically the farthest neighborhood of the endpoint edge. And uh, similarly, this L will be the farthest neighborhood of endpoint one. So we always take the farthest neighborhood. And in the case that one of those vertices are isolated, so to complete the definition, we just define the farthest neighbor to be zero and h plus one for this one. And this property C is actually defined for those two endpoints. And we said uh, endpoints, for example, this, this endpoint h has property C if First, it does have a neighborhood. And the second, there is an edge in this interval. So from the farthest neighborhood to the edge minus one. Okay. Um, this prop three proxy looks a bit strange right now, but it's actually very helpful for us to describe the extremal construction. Um, okay, next we, that is the main result of our paper. So. Here, for we determine this minimal degree threshold asymptotically for all the order graph with interval chromatic number two. So that is our main result. Uh, I put the result in the diagram form so it's easy to understand the relationship between them. Um, so as you can see here, we will have four different situations. So the first case is when this graph has no property A. And equivalently, this says this alpha star is at most one half. Because if no property A, which means I have some edges in the first half of the interval or the second half of the interval. And in this case, this it is sufficient to have a perfect tiling. It is sufficient to have minimal degree one minus alpha star plus some error term times n. And this is quite matching to our lower bound because uh, the lower bound is the, we have this lower bound, the y minus alpha star times n. So asymptotically, this is the best possible. And so the extremal construction uh, is just the space barrier I defined before. And the second category is when the graph has property A but also have property B and also have property B. 
then in this case, this threshold is equal to acetotally equal to one half times n. Okay, and the next category is when it has property A, but not have property B. If in addition, one of the endpoints has property C, then the threshold is again one half times n. And the remaining case, that is when the graph has property A, no property B, and neither of the endpoints has property C, then the threshold will go back to one minus alpha star. Okay, so that is basically this theorem give a full description on the minimal uh, degree threshold for this type of graphs. Um, let's let's uh, look at this theorem for one moment. Um, so first, because of this range of alpha star, uh, that is to say for the first three classes, their threshold, they are all above this half of the n. But in the last class here, because alpha star is greater than one half, so this threshold is actually below the half of the n. Okay. And for the first class and the fourth class, and you can easily see this extremal construction, the lower bound is actually comes from the space barrier. But the construction for the middle two cases are different. Uh, the reason, so here you can see the threshold is actually the same for the middle two cases, but the reason I split into two categories because even though they have the same number, but their extremal construction are different. And I will explain extremal construction in a second. Okay. Okay, so first class uh, is when the graph has property A and property B. So when H has property B, just to remind you, property B is whenever you split into two non-empty intervals, there is an edge in between, okay? So in this situation, the extremal construction will be, we take the union of two cliques and this two cliques has almost the same size. And in addition, we require edge is not divisible by any of the part size. So that's the only two condition. And that's the union of the cliques. Okay. And it's clear the minimal degree is roughly n over two. Why it does not have a perfect tiling? So if, again, if we have a perfect tiling, then because of this divisibility condition, at least there exists one copy which must cover vertices from both sets because it's not divisible by edge. So I must have such a copy. And then because of the property B, I know I should have some edges in here in my copy edge. However, in the construction, there's no edges between here. So it's a contradiction. Okay, and this construction is called the divisibility barrier because the reason we failed to have a perfect tiling is this divisibility issue. Okay. So that's the second extremal construction. And the third extremal construction is for the graph which has the property C. Okay. Uh, we can just assume H, the endpoints H has a property C and the other one is similar. Okay, and just to remind you, property C is this edge does have some neighborhood. And then when you take the farthest neighborhood and we could find some edge in this interval here. Okay, and then the construction will be, we first take a interval of this size and we will keep it to be an independent set. And next we take an independent set of this n over two size. And because of this, the choice of the sizes, I still have one vertex left and I just put it in here. And we will add all the edges between these two sets and also all the edges between n and the second set. So that is all the edges. 
and you can check the minimal degrees roughly and over two. Okay. And why it does not have a perfect edge tiling? The, the issue is ended on the single vertex M. So if there exists a perfect tiling, and in particular, the N should be covered. And also in this copy, the N must play the role of edge here because N is the largest vertex. So if you want to fit into the ordering, it has to be this N. Uh, has to be this edge. Okay, so the N plays the role of edge. Then there should be some vertex plays the role of S edge. Okay, and we want to find this vertex, the embedding of this vertex. But this is a neighborhood wedge. So the only possibility is this vertex appears in the V2. And now, because both U and U prime, they have higher ordering than the S edge. So it must be also in the V2. But now the contradiction happens because I know U and U prime, there should be an edge, but here my V2 is an independent set. And this construction is called the local barrier because as you can see, the issue is really for on this single vertex. For the single vertex N, I don't even have one single copy of edge to cover it. So of course there's no perfect tiling. Okay, so now I have described all the extremal constructions and in the rest of the talk, I will focus on how to prove those conditions are actually sufficient to get the perfect tiling. So maybe uh, now it's time to stop for a moment to ask if you have any questions on the statement. Okay, then I would take this as no. So I would just continue to the proof strategy. Okay. So uh, similarly, as many of, of the previous results in this field, we're gonna use the absorbing method, which is developed by Rodo, Ruchinsky, and Samaretti for finding the uh, expanding embeddings. And the application involves like finding Hamiltonian pass, Hamiltonian cycle, and also such graph tiling problems. So the spanning structure. And the essential part of this uh, absorbing method is this idea of absorbing set. The absorbing set here I denoted by this ABS. And this set has two very nice properties. The first property is itself will have a perfect edge tiling for whatever you edge you want, you fix in the beginning that you want to study. And also for any small set L, a very small set, this absorbing set together with Sorry again. This absorbing set together with L has a perfect tiling. So that's the two properties of this absorbing set. And also we will use this notion of almost perfect tiling. That is the edge tiling can cover all the vertices, but a very small portion of the vertices. So it almost cover all the vertices, but not exactly. And uh, typically, the absorbing type of proof will work like this way. So in the step one, for giving two graphs, so H is the, the thing you want to tie it into, and G is your ground graph. So for giving two graphs, first we want to find this absorbing set in the G. And the absorbing set should be very small so that when you delete it, you almost keep the same minimal degree condition. So this is a small set. The step two is we want to find the almost perfect tiling for the remaining graph for G minus the absorbing set. And then in the last step for whatever leftover vertices from the step two, because here I have almost perfect tiling, I would have some leftovers. For whatever small leftovers, by the definition of the absorbing set, we know the ABS together with L has a perfect tiling. And now if you put the two step, the tiling from the two steps together, 
we will get the perfect tiling for G. So that's the main idea. But as you can see here, this absorbing method is not like a black box theorem you can apply directly. And indeed, majority of the work will be on how to find this absorbing set and how to find the perfect tiling. And the proof for this two step, um, there are some common techniques you could use um, in the literature. However, uh, depends on the different H energy, the proof often virus. So it's a bit technical and different each time. Okay, so let's first look at the almost perfect tiling part in our application. Uh, back to the literature a little bit for the unordered graph. For unordered graph, this almost perfect tiling has been studied by Kalmlosh going, going back to 2000. And Kalmlosh proved that if the graphs has this minimal degree, this one minus one over the critical chromatic number, which I defined in the very beginning, contains an almost perfect tiling. And indeed, this is the reason why this critical chromatic number is important in this minimal degree threshold, because it determines the conditions for almost perfect tiling. That is actually where this definition comes from. Um, the proof, this proof used the regularity lemma, which is now quite standard in the area. Then the key idea is when we apply the regularity and we are in a situation that we could have this key set and they are almost in the equal size. And also each set pair is an epsilon regular pair. So that's the idea situation. I just try to sketch the idea. And in this idea situation, we try to apply the regularity. And the first step is at least we need to find a single copy inside of this graph. And that is easy because by the regularity, indeed, once you have such epsilon regular pair, then for any graph with chromatic number k, f is containing g prime. That is ensured by the regularity. And then we can just apply this idea again and again. We find one copy, we delete it, and the rest of guys still have epsilon regular property. So we do it again, again, until we find an almost perfect tiling. So that is the standard application of the regularity. Okay, now let's try to apply this idea and order graph and see if it works or some issues arises. So the first problem is when we try to do the embedding, not only we, we want to find a relation between the edges, but also we want to keep the same ordering. And this turns out is easy to overcome. And the way is, let's say I have some graph, order graph with interval command number K. And what I do will be, I actually first, I do some chopping stuff. And after the chopping, I could find some sufficient large subset in each of the A, such that those sets have a very nice ordering. And here in the nice ordering, I mean, if you look at two sets, either one set is, they are all uh, greater than the other set, or they are all smaller than the other set. So only have these two cases, either they are all greater or they are all smaller. So I don't want the interlacing because this kind of make confusing when I try to get the ordering of the edge. And this step is quite uh, trivial to do. Uh, it's kind of elementary. And for example, uh, in the end, we probably in the case that we can find this ordering such that all the S1 vertices is strictly less than S2 and less than S3 and so on and until to SK. Okay, once we have those S set and now it's easy to the embedding. So because first I claim the set to be sufficient large so I can still use a regularity property. 
and then the embedding will be for this interval command number k graph. I can just embed its ith interval into the si, right? Then automatically I have I keep the ordering of the graph, and also because of this is a regular it's a regular pair, and you can think about it's actually a complete bipartite graph between them. So you can find any edges you want. And in particular, you will find a copy of Judge. So this part is still quite um, standard as before. So in some, it's easy to find a single copy. However, the issue is you cannot always iterate this process to get an almost perfect tiling. And for example, so you could have this graph, which is quite simple, an alternate path with interval command number two. And we try to apply this idea. We got this epsilon regular pair, and it's easy to find one copy, which might look like this. And because my A2 might be uh, maybe do this way. So it could be my A2 is always higher than A1. That could happen. And then to get this embedding, I always have to take one, two vertices from A2 and one vertices from A1 because I have to follow the relation of the ordering. But now you see the issue is the vertices in A2 run out quickly while there are still a lot of left over in the A1. So in the end, you cannot really reach to the almost perfect tiling. So that's the main issue. And the way we overcome this difficulty is we use this idea of bottle graph. And the roughly speaking, the bottle graph is we gonna, so this is my bottle graph. I gonna put my target graph edge in this bottle. And then my bottle graph is on order graph. So I can apply all this regularity tricks on this bottle graph to get almost perfect tiling. And then inside the each bottle, I ask him to have a perfect tiling. So that's the idea. And let me uh, go to uh, the definition more precisely. Uh, first, we had this B, which is uh, some complete multi-partite graph. And that is unordered. It's an unordered graph. And we denote the part size to be U1 to UK. And the sigma is just a permutation of the labels of the parts. And the BT is the standard notion for a blow up, which is for each vertex, we blow it up with an independent set of size T. And if there's an edge, then we're gonna add a complete bipartite graph between them. So that's the standard blow up. And the next is a, it's perhaps a quite new definition. Uh, we call the interval labeling phi with respect to sigma. So basically we want to give an ordering on this unordered graph. And the way is, so for, we gonna, so the idea is for each part, we don't really care the ordering inside of the part. It doesn't matter which one is higher, which one is lower. But the most important is we want the whole parts i is smaller than the whole parts g if the ordering of i is smaller than the order of g. So basically, you kind of want to group the vertices of the parts together and to order them. And that's why we call the interval labeling, because we actually order the, this piece of intervals. And the all the blue up will be we assign this ordering to my blue up copy. And basically, once you took this blue up set, and then you want to group them together to assign the labeling. So that is the whole set is smaller than the whole set of X. The whole blue up set of X is smaller than the whole blue up set of Y if the order of X is smaller than Y. Okay. And finally, we reach to the definition of the bottle graph. So what is a bottle graph? Uh, for some order graph edge, we said B 
is a bottle graph of edge. If for any interval labeling, we can find some constant t, such that this ordered blue up has a perfect edge tiling. So this is what I said before. Well, once we do uh, almost tiling on the B, and then inside of the B, we want to have a perfect edge tiling. Okay. And right, so so once we have this, once we find this bottle graph, what we're gonna do is we apply the regularity on this unordered graph. We get almost perfect tiling. And then by the definition, inside of the bottle, it has a perfect edge tiling, the ordered version. And so in put them together, we would have a perfect edge tiling. So that is the next theorem. So we showed um, for any order graph edge. So this is a quite a general theorem for any order graph edge. And if B is a bottle graph of edge, then for any G with this minimal degree, it contains an almost perfect tiling. And indeed, this condition comes from the Comlosh theorem. So here you can see Comlosh says if you have this over this critical mat number, it has a perfect edge tiling. So basically, my condition here is used to ensure my bottle graph does have an almost perfect tiling. So that's the usage of this property. Okay, so with this theorem in the hand, the nice thing is that originally, what we need to prove is for every graph, when it satisfies some condition, it has a more, almost perfect tiling. But now with this theorem, the task becomes, we just need to find the optimal bottle graph. Because once you find a bottle graph, then automatically you get the lower bound for this minimal degree condition. Or you get the minimal degree condition. And you try to, search it over all the bottle graph. And once you had the optimal one, and that would be the minimal degree threshold. Okay, so now the task becomes we want to find a bottle graph. However, unfortunately, this theorem does not reduce the difficulty of the problem, which I really means is that finding the optimal bottle graph is as hard as the original problem. So it's, it's kind of the equivalent problem. But, but why we still think the theorem is really nice is because although in general, in general finding the optimal graph is, optimal bottle graph is hard, but for the graphs, H with, so for the specific graphs, once you know its structural properties, sometimes you, you might have some intuitive ways to construct this bottle graph directly. So it's hard in general, but for the specific graph you want to study, perhaps it's much easier to just construct this bottle graph. And so just to show one application here, uh, we actually use it to prove our main results on the graphs with interval increment number two. And the way we construct the bottle graph is, we're gonna use this alpha star. And just to recall, alpha star is the minimum of these two parameters. And the way is we define this P to be alpha star times H. And H, we decompose H into AP plus R. And this R will be the reminder, so it's less than P. And the bottle graph will be the complete multipartite graph with one part of size R and a part of size P. So in total, we have edge vertices. Um, and you can easily calculate that the critical command number in this case is exactly one over R of a star. Okay. And it still remains to check this P is indeed a bottle graph. But I want to remind you this P now is a fixed graph. We, clearly see its structure. And for whatever edge you want to study, it's also a fixed graph. So for two fixed graphs, if you want to check if it's a tiling, that is the easy. 
that's an easy task. You can sometimes you can just do it by observation or when it's too complicated, you can formalize it as a linear uh, optimization problem, right? So you choose to assign the vertices, you choose to assign a copy of edge to which parts and you just do a little bit of optimization. So it's a uh, pretty basic linear algebra stuff. So it's easy to verify the bottle graph is actually, a given bottle graph is actually have perfect tidy. Okay, so once you verify it's indeed a bottle graph, and then we apply this and the general theorem here, and we're gonna get this, is for order graph with interval increment number two, every graph with minimal degree this. So basically here I get it from by plugging critical command number is equal to one over alpha star. So I get one minus alpha star plus a bit error term. And this is enough to have an almost perfect tiling. Okay. So that is almost perfect tiling. Um, absorbing part, I try to do, be uh, brief in the absorbing part uh, because I don't have enough time. And also this part is uh, quite technical. Um, so we had this general absorbing theorem. So although the proof is quite technical, but it's actually quite standard in this absorbing method. So there's no new idea, but just you have to do a little bit uh, dirty work. Um, so the absorbing theorem we had is um, if a graph has the minimal degree at least one minus one over the interval number, and then G contains a absorbing set we want. Okay. So this is condition is kind of general because we just need uh, this uh, interval command number. Okay, and in particular, uh, in the case that this interval current number is equal to um, two, we just have this condition delta G is at least one half plus a bit error term times N. So this is a condition for having an absorbing set. Okay, now we try to put the theorems A, B together to get our main result. So I just state the main result here, this diagram, and we want to show for this minimal degree, we can find a perfect tiling. Okay, so for the first three cases, and this degree condition, they both satisfy the condition of theorem A and B, because this is greater than one half, and this one half is greater than the one minus alpha star when it does not have property A. So basically in this three cases, pretty fine, the condition with A and B are satisfied, we can just apply them directly. So we first get the absorbing and then get the almost perfect tiling. And finally using the absorbing to polish our almost perfect tiling. The a bit issue is on the last case. In the last case, this minimal degree actually dropped below the n over two. So this means we can no longer use this general absorbing theorem. But the good thing is, in this case, indeed, we know a lot of information on my graph edge. We know a lot on structure property. We know it has property A, no property B, and neither of the endpoints has property C. And those conditions will be helpful for us to improve the absorbing theorem. And indeed, we can have an improved absorbing theorem with much less minimal degree condition and so that's how we uh, solve this case. And I just ignore the detail. Um, okay, so, so just last a few minutes, I will talk about the open problems. Uh, our study leaves a lot of interesting open problems. The first natural one is perhaps we, so we give a full description on the minimal degree behavior for interval increment number two graphs. And it is very natural we think about more outer graphs like interval increment num number three or more general interval increment number K. 
And it turns out the behavior is actually very complicated. As you can see here, already in this inkable chromatin number two case, we have three different extremal construction. And I would believe for uh, the remaining graph, the behavior is more complicated. But, but it's a very interesting problem to study. So can we character, characterize the asymptotics of this threshold for all the older graphs? And some tools we can we can still use the our absorbing theorem, except for some cases we have perhaps need to improve. And still we could use this bottle graph theorem. Uh, but you have to find what is the optimal bottle graph. Okay. And another direction is uh, there are also some studies on determining the exact value of this minimal degree threshold. Uh, here we only decide the asymptotics, but indeed in the literature, there for some specific graphs, like the cycles or complete graphs or complete hypergraphs, even, there are some studies which care about the exact value of this threshold. So for I think it will be also an interesting problem for the older setting. And that's basically all I want to talk today. And thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, you're welcome. Thanks very much, Lena. Uh, we thank our speaker in some way, folks. Audio clapping. Right. Uh, yeah, thanks. So uh, any questions people have? So, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot, a lot of times there's this phenomena where if you uh, randomly perturb the graph, suppose you, you add in like uh, probability n, log n over n kind of uh, random edges, uh, then uh, usually the, the threshold can be lowered into yes. average linear bound. Do you, do you expect that to happen for this kind of problems? Uh, I think it depends on the range of the P. There are actually studies on this tiling problem for random graphs. I, I know there they are some studies. And behavior depends on the probability. Mm. I guess for some probability, it works pretty similar as this case. But for if you probably drops pretty low, then of course, if your probability is too small, you cannot have such spanning structure. So it depends on the range. It's actually also an interesting problem. Like you think about which range of P have what kind of behavior. So if we add it, if we add in like P equals to let's say log n uh, log n over n kind of probability, uh, then we will then. Uh, is it possible to have like arbitrarily small linear uh, linear linear minimum degree threshold? Some something like that. Mm, I don't know exactly for. I don't know exact the result, but. Um, are, are there this kind of results in the unordered cases? Yes, there are some study on random. Random type. You mean the tiling problem, right? Yeah, the tiling problems. Yeah, there are there are some things. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can try to find the reference if you want. Okay. Thank you. Other question. I've got one actually. Could you scroll up to that uh, tree diagram? You have the cases. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't. I don't have a strong sense of how common each of these cases are among the the ordered graphs with the the chromatic number two. Do you, do you know? Or is one of these the more common than others? Or uh, so so this case, I think this case is actually the most common case um, because. Uh, what this really says is in my graph, if you partition the interval into two 
half intervals of almost equal size, and there's an edge in here. So this is kind of the most common case, but the rest of them, they are kind of degenerate sense is because you only have edges between here. Yeah. Between sense. us two. And this kind of, this case, I would say fewer graphs. I mean, in probability, fewer graph is this property, but uh, they have more complicated behavior. Well, thanks. Uh, <laughs> other questions? All right, well, uh, in that case, uh, thank you very much for your interesting talk today and uh, uh, we can end it there. <laughs>